Memory churn is a constant and serious problem for the performance of your applications. Uh, allocating loads of temporary objects in a short period of time puts a ton of pressure on your memory heaps, resulting in more GC events being kicked off. My name is Cole McCandless, and rather than promoting a bulk of your objects to static in order to solve the memory churn problems, you can utilize an amazingly powerful data structure known as an object pool. Typically, memory churn comes from creating a whole group of temporarily resident objects, uh, like images or views, paint objects, and even threads, that repeatedly get created, exist for a little while, and then are freed. This action ends up polluting and fragmenting the memory heap in a very short amount of time, resulting in more GC events being kicked off. When this happens on a regular basis, you end up getting a horde of GC events that occur at a great frequency. But thankfully, there's a way to get the same functionality of the allocation and freeing of objects without the GC events, and it's called an object pool. Effectively, when you're done with an object, rather than freeing it back to the memory heap, you keep a reference to it in a list of available objects. The next time you need to allocate an object of that type, you can repurpose an existing object from the pool rather than grabbing a brand new one from the memory heap. Only when your pool is empty does it make sense to go back to the heap to allocate new objects, which will eventually be freed back to the pool, growing its potential size over time. The end result of using an object pool is that instead of a ton of heap fluctuation, you'll end up with stable allocations or small growths over time, which of course can lead to less GC events being kicked off, helping you save precious frame time. But object pools are tricky to get right and have a handful of implementation caveats that you need to watch out for. Firstly, remember that there's an overhead involved each time the object pool needs to go back to the main heap to allocate memory. Now, it may be small, but it's there and you should watch out for it. As such, rather than allocating an object each time one is needed, it makes more sense to allocate a group of free objects at one time so that the overhead is mitigated for future allocations. In addition, rather than waiting for each empty pool request to make a new heap allocation, instead, fill your pool with objects at application load time so the first group of objects grabbed in the pool are as fast as possible. With a uh, little statistics gathering here, you could even figure out the ideal pre-allocation amount so that you can fill your pool ahead of time, minimizing the number of times you have to go back to the heap during the lifetime of your application. However, one of the downsides of objects pools is that now you, the programmer, are responsible for allocating and freeing objects manually back to the object pool, which is a pattern that very much resembles non-garbage collected languages. So you might want to limit the usage of object pools to high churn object sets that demand this level of interaction. Otherwise, you'd be wasting a lot of features of the Java garbage collected language. And finally, in order to make sure that all of your objects are returned to the pool properly, make sure that member variables of these objects are properly cleaned up so that it doesn't contain any references to any other objects in memory that might be valid for the garbage collector to clean up later. If you're not careful here, you can end up creating a lot of persistent memory leaks for these objects in your pools. There's some intuition involved with finding the right places for these object pools, but if you're ever in doubt or looking for new opportunities, you can use the allocation tracker tool in Android Studio to identify any areas where you may be seeing a horde of similar object types coming from roughly the same call stack in a very short period of time. This is a classic sign of memory thrashing and easy to see that it's the right place to start with object pools. Anyhow, using object pools are a great way to reduce memory churn and grab back critical performance resources. But like anything else, this feature comes with a trade-off in addition to code that makes it happen. If you're interested in other trade-offs for performance, make sure you check out the rest of the Android Performance Patterns content and join our Google Plus page for more tips from other great developers. So keep calm, profile your code, and always remember, perf matters. <laughs>